Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Monday, June 6th. Top stories coming up right now outside with live cam. I mentioned it this morning, Justin Horn, and I'm going to mention it one more time. What did we do to make Mother Nature so mad? <laughs> I'm wondering the same thing. I'm not sure, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be a prolonged madness, if you will, uh, the way it's looking as we get into this week and even into next week. Take a look at these numbers. Uh, this is the forecast heat index today. OK, so this is what it's going to feel like around five o'clock. We think 106 here in San Antonio. So this is the temperature and the humidity combined and the temperatures around the area are extremely hot. 111 in Creso Springs, 106 feels like in Uvalde, 104 in Lakey, 104 in Kerrville. Mostly sunny skies. So this is danger zone. We've got to mention that if you're going to be outside for any length of time, this is one of those days where you got to be extra careful. You know, drink the water, you know, all the, the rules here, but uh, the heat advisor goes through 8 p.m. And that includes basically much of the area. If you're heading out to the say the splash pad today, the kiddos are going to be out there. Know that temperatures are going to be up around 103. Again, that feels like a little bit warmer, uh, but that UV index no surprise here is going to be extreme. So the burn time is super quick. Sunscreen also a great idea today. Pollen count just mold and it's low. It's at 340. Big question is when is this heat going to go away? What is the long term forecast look like? We'll get into all that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And the city has cooling centers. Speaking of that heat, they're open now to the public if you need somewhere to go and get out of the heat. 24 libraries and two community centers will be open during normal business hours, and there are some centers specifically for seniors. You can find more information about this on our website at kset.com. Monday morning commute is coming to a close. We've got some leftover slowdowns here or there right now. Traffic looks great in these shots, but some of our heaviest traffic remains on the east side. 10 South cutoff uh, just past I-35 heavy traffic in that particular area. And for now, let's look at today's nine at nine. A manhunt is underway in Philadelphia after police say multiple gunmen opened fire on a crowd, leaving at least two bystanders dead and nearly a dozen others hurt. Police say the incident started with a fist fight between two men before they each pulled out a gun and started shooting. One of them died. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, 14 people were shot and three more were killed after authorities say several shooters opened fire at a nightclub early Sunday morning. Police believe multiple shooters were involved and so far, no suspects have been arrested. It is the second mass shooting there in the last week. In Phoenix, eight people were shot and a 14 year old girl killed on Saturday after authorities say an altercation at a strip mall escalated. The gun violence archive now saying the U.S. is on track for one of the deadliest years on record. The spate of shootings pushing gun reform to the forefront of lawmakers minds as senators work to hammer out a potential bipartisan compromise. A fourth grader from Robb Elementary in Uvalde is expected to testify in a congressional hearing on gun violence later this week. The young girl said she covered herself in blood and played dead to survive the deadly shooting. The parents of one of the children killed are also expected to testify. Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning the West not to send longer range rocket systems to Ukraine. The warning comes as Russian forces claim to have destroyed Western military supplies. The U.S. has announced plans to deliver $700 million worth of security assistance for Ukraine that includes medium range rockets. On Thursday, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol will hold the first of a series of primetime hearings. During those sessions, the committee says it will lay out the findings of its investigation and show what it says is previously unseen material from that deadly day. Parents searching for baby formula will likely be stuck for at least a few more weeks. Production resumed over the weekend at a plant making Similac. It's been closed since February. The first runs will be focused on specialty formulas and should start shipping out later this month. House prices have been on the rise for the past couple of years, but some cities still haven't come all the way back to the high scene in the early 2000s. An analysis from Zillow done for the Wall Street Journal says home values in nearly 500 cities are still below the level seen before the 2008 crash. The Warriors even the NBA Finals at one game apiece last night, beating the Celtics 107 to 88. The series now heads to Boston. Game three is Wednesday night at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT. And that's today's 9 at 9. 
In your morning headlines, the connection between a murder judge and the suspect and the Prime Minister of Britain may lose his job tonight. Plus, we have lost an icon known mostly for her baby face and all a country singer wants for Christmas is 20 million from <laughs> Mariah Carey. At all. Okay, we'll get David Sears in here to explain all this. I would like to have 20 million from Mariah Carey. I just like to meet Mariah Carey. I don't need that would be neat. But 20 million would be would be good too. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's start with this. A connection has been revealed between a retired Wisconsin judge and the suspect who shot and killed him. The suspect is 56 year old Douglas Ude. The judge is 68 year old Judge Romer. According to ABC, you pleaded no contest to armed burglary back in 2005 and Judge Romer sentenced him to six years in state prison. Friday morning, police responded to the judge's home. He was found zip tied to a chair and fatally shot. you found in the basement of the house with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was taken alive to the hospital. A judge from a rural county is, is targeted and, and, and murdered. Uh, it's just, it's a, a important to our, our judiciary and to uh, to a leadership in our, in, our, in our state and our country. So yeah, it's, it's a horrible situation. Yeah, a hit list was found in the suspect's car. On the list, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Are you think politics rough here in the states in the middle of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee? Britain's governing conservatives are taking a no confidence vote today to decide if they should kick Prime Minister Boris Johnson out of his job as Britain's leader. One of the leaders of the party got enough letters from lawmakers not happy with Johnson to trigger the vote. If Johnson loses the vote, he will be replaced as the conservative leader and prime minister. If he wins, he is safe for another year. He has been dealing with ethics scandals like breaking his own COVID-19 rules. By the way, just for clarification, the British Conservative Party, more in line with our Democratic Party than our Republican Party on many issues, especially social issues. All right, you may not know her name, but you know her face. The original Gerber baby, Ann Turner Cook, passed away over the weekend. She was 95 years old. She's seen here holding Lucas Warren, a one-year-old from Georgia, who is the first child with Down syndrome to be named a Gerber baby. Now, Ann's cute little face was on Gerber products for more than 90 years. Back in 1990, the New York Times called her sketch as the Gerber baby, one of the world's most recognizable corporate logos. It was many years before her identity became known. In her adult days, she became a school teacher. Once again, passed away at 95. And finally, you remember the Christmas song, All I Want for Christmas is You, sung by Mariah Carey. It was a massive hit. No, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> now she's being sued for $20 million for copyright infringement. A country singer named Vince Vance, his real name is Andy Stone, filed the suit in New Orleans on Friday. He claims he wrote and recorded a song called All I Want for Christmas is You, five years before Mariah Carey turned her version into a colossal hit. However, experts have weighed in. You know those experts, they're always weighing in. They say <laughs> the only thing in common is the title and the U.S. Copyright Office has dozens of songs with the same name. No comment yet from Mariah or Sony. Well, that's, that's, so, that's interesting. That's a long time after because well, it came out like in the 90s and it right. was a hit back then as well. Well, it's now one of the most popular yeah. Christmas yeah. songs. So it goes without saying that somebody might want a piece of the action, right? I think because it got so popular recently. Yeah. I mean, they just, you know, played the heck out of it over Christmas mm -hmm. this year, yes. didn't they? Yeah. So it's become well, very popular. So if somebody's trying to cash in on it yes, wasn't sir. popular when I sang it. It's popular when she sang it. Right. So maybe I can get now some of her money. Now pay me. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Let's okay. Yeah, that goes. All right. And we'll wait for your rendition of Mariah Carey at a later date. Yes. yes. You hold on for that. Okay. Commercial break. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, David. <laughs> yeah, long, yeah, long break. <laughs> 907, 78 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A World War II veteran taking to the skies again in the same type of plane that he trained in back in 1943. Saracosta is going to share his story coming up a little bit later in the show. Plus, coming up next, how donating boxes of healthy cereal will help feed children during the summer months and how you can help. One in four children don't know where they will find their next meal. That's according to the San Antonio Food Bank. Baptist hospitals are hoping to help as many area children and adults struggling with hunger by holding its annual Healthy Over Hungry cereal drive. They're collecting boxes of healthy cereal starting today. Our Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Baptist Hospital downtown with more. Tiffany, good morning. How many boxes of healthy cereal do they really want to collect? 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. They hope to collect at least 500 boxes just at this hospital. Last year, they went over that number, so they're hoping to exceed the expectations again. But check it out. Take a look at this very creative setup. All different cereals, and we have these barrels. Also, they're hoping to collect a lot. And good morning, Connie. Good morning. Talk to us about what are we seeing during the summer. So during the summer here in San Antonio, when our traditional school year ends, over a quarter of a million children are going to have to wonder where they're going to get their supplemental breakfast and lunches because that would be normally provided during the school year for them. So one of the wonderful things that we partner with San Antonio Food Bank with every year since 2014 is to collect cereal that can go to those children and help supplement their breakfast during the summer months when they're out of school. During breakfast time, we don't think about this, but it's so important to have that meal. Talk to us about how crucial it is for these children. So absolutely. Breakfast is literally one of the most important meals of the day. Um, it helps to stabilize your blood glucose levels throughout the next 24 hour period. So you want to look for cereals that are high in fiber, low in sugar. that are going to provide you a lot of nutrient value. Of course, they are kids, so we want them to eat um, a good healthy breakfast. They have to have to have to eat it. So you're going to see a mixture of some that are a little bit sweeter than others. But ideally, you want those high fiber, low sugar cereals to be your best intake. What are people going to expect when they come here and drop this off? There's a lot of challenges happening this week. Talk to us about that. So one of the, this is our first one. This is what we've um, named the second year in a row, Stuff the Stretcher. And last year we collected over 526 boxes. Um, so as this is day one, we're kicking it off. We already have 45 boxes here to start off with. Amazing. Tomorrow we are going to be doing our um, annual cereal eating contest. It's got a little bit of a twist to it. Um, um, the feeder is blindfolded and the eater has to keep their hands behind their back. So it's much more of a challenge, but we're a very competitive um, group here at BMC, just as we are throughout the entire Baptist Health System. So if BMC is challenging to collect 500 boxes, we want all of our sister hospitals to collect even more. Talking about the different locations, where can people go and drop off these cereal boxes? At any of our Baptist facilities, they're more than welcome to bring them inside. Um, every hospital is going to have a similar setup to drop those items off. And please go to the San Antonio Food Bank. Um, they're always taking um, donations. One dollar that you donate through the San Antonio Food Bank transitions into seven meals. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to have all the details on KSAT.com. Back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. We have a traffic alert at the top of the newscast. I told you of some slowdowns on the east side right now. We are watching an officer who literally has closed off one lane and is walking out, picking something up off the road and throwing it off uh, away from the roadway. So we're not sure what's on the road itself, but clearly some sort of debris cleanup is underway. This is 410 South, very close to Ben's Engelman. So the area of that little log jam that I was telling you about about 15 minutes ago. Again, this is on uh, over near I-10 and 410 on San Antonio's east side in that general area. And as far as the outdoors, we haven't hit those triple digits, not yet. Not yet, and we know it's coming in a big way later on today. And this trend, I mean, people keep asking the same phrase, and that is, is there any relief in sight? The short answer is? Probably not. Uh, you know, Mike and I were looking way down the line with some of these models, and they do show some hope, but the problem is we can't trust these the, the long-range forecasts. Oftentimes, it doesn't pan out the way those computer models show. Hopefully, maybe sometime next week, we can get a little bit of change, but in the meantime, it's going to be hot. Let's uh, let's look at the, the time lapse here, and you can see we had some morning clouds, and those always help a little bit, but they're already thinning out at this point, and we're seeing quite a bit of blue sky. 79 degrees at the airport, two point is at 69, and a southerly breeze at 14 miles per hour. At least there is a breeze, so there is that, and the dew point will fall off a little bit, but not enough because we'll still get a heat index this afternoon. Cloud cover, it's spotty, and it's already trying to shrink a little bit, so we can pretty much uh, take the clouds out of the forecast, I think, by the afternoon. Temperature-wise, at this hour, we're uh, sitting in the upper 70s. Holotus, Bernie Stage at 75, Canyon Lake at 77, New Braunfels at 80, 75 right now in Seguin. If you haven't taken that morning run yet, get it done soon, because these temperatures are going to start racing upwards. We've got heat advisories in place for most of the area, and there are some excessive heat warnings as you get north of that, places like San Angelo, where they could get up to 107 today. That is in the forecast. Our case at 12 hour forecast, 91 noontime, will be at about 100 by 3 o'clock, 102 by 4 o'clock, and I'm forecasting a high of 103, 5 p.m. Southerly winds at 15 miles per hour, and even at 9 o'clock, we're still at 90 degrees. 
with some breezy winds. And the dew point trend today, I mentioned the dew points do come down into the mid 60s, maybe lower 60s, but these numbers are still high enough. It's still humid enough to where we're going to tack on a few degrees to the air temperature, which is where we get into that dangerous territory. The heat index could rise above 105, maybe even up to 106 this afternoon by 5 o'clock. And look at some of these heat indices 107 in Seguin, 108 Castroville, 107 in Pearsall. Carrizo Springs heat index could be as high as 111. Yeah, that is uh, that is in the danger territory, and we're going to see this heat continue right on through the rest of the week. Uh, what about consecutive 100 degree days? Well, the most we've ever had that was back in 1962. We had 21 consecutive days of 100 or above here in San Antonio. We remember 2013. That was a drought year. We had 15 days in a row. 2019. 12 days in a row, 2011, another big drought year, 12 days in a row. Right now, we're projecting that we're going to see 10 days in a row of triple digit heat. It's not a for sure thing, but I just want to give you an idea of where we're going to rank. If that were to happen and it's possible, uh, we'd be right up there in sort of the top five uh, as far as consecutive uh, or at least top 10 consecutive uh, 100 degree days if that does happen. And here's why high pressure uh, right over now over Mexico. Uh, and it really doesn't move that much. This is that heat high that we know so well, but it sticks around for really the foreseeable future. Now, the one maybe glimmer of hope I see is on Saturday. The high shoves west just a little bit and maybe opens the door for a weak frontal battery to move in and that could kick off a shower or storm. I wouldn't bet on it yet. We're going to put in a 10% chance of rain on Saturday, but otherwise high moves right back in and the heat is going to be significant today. 102 that heat index around 106, but notice most of Texas is in the same boat. Uh, 92 in Corpus Christi, but it'll feel like 102. 108 in Laredo, it'll feel like 111. Very quickly, we do need to talk about Tropical Storm Alex. Look, this uh, this is becoming not so tropical. Sometimes when it starts to move into the cooler waters, it loses its tropical characteristics, and I think this is where that's headed. It is affecting Bermuda today, but it will weaken and uh, become extra tropical here in the coming days. We will no longer worry about it. Extended forecast 102 Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, 101 Thursday, 102 Friday. You can see we'll be flirting with some records there each and every day. Today I, we probably set a record, but even going into the weekend, there's that 10% chance on Saturday. We're still going to be up around 103 and 103 on Sunday. Triple digits. All the way through. All right. Thank yeah. you, Justin. 919 about 79 degrees and when we come back highlights from game two of the NBA finals as the Warriors tie up the series. And OK, now it's a series. It's all tied up <laughs> at one game apiece after Golden State wins game two of the NBA finals. David is back with RJ Marquez now to break down uh, the Warriors win and what is next in what's turned out to be a pretty good series. Mm. Welcome back. Yeah. You weren't here last week. Ste yeah. Steph is yeah. Steph is like she's having a hard time dealing with all this. She doesn't know which way to lean. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a Steph Curry fan like my mom. OK, but here we go. Derek White. Yeah, Derek White, Ime yeah. Adoka, Will yeah. Hardy, all former so. Spurs guys, Spurs mm -hmm. assistants or Spurs players. So yeah, a lot <laughs> of Steph a lot of Spurs DNA in this series so far. He's all over the place. <laughs> Mark is just like, I'm waiting till game four to decide who's going to win the series. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a dog in this fight. <laughs> nope, no dog in this fight. So let's get to some highlights from last Ooh. night's game two. Mm -hmm. Celtics, unlike game one, Celtics were playing a little bit better in the in the uh, first quarter. And they got out to a nice eight point lead early, but then Golden State came back thanks to oh that old turnover showed up for Boston <laughs> last night. They turned it over like yeah, seven yeah. times in the first quarter. That ain't going to help. They anymore. have been struggling. Yeah, you definitely don't want to give Golden State the opportunity here to come back. And as you said, David, nice start for the Celtics, but uh, Warriors by the end of the first quarter had gotten things pretty close here. And you could see that we're going to have yeah. be going back and forth here in the first half. Here's your guy right there. A little uh -oh. pull up jumper from Derek White. And then there, where's Derek? He's in the corner. There he is. Bam! Derek is, uh, Derek. is thriving in Boston. Yeah, yeah he's, he's had having a couple of nice he's, games. He's so far. having a really good uh, final so far. The Warriors ended up uh, coming back though at the end of the. Look at that. Mm. Look, look, look at the offensive rebounds they're getting. Yeah, so. just the uh, just the physicality, David. I yeah. thought was a big, big difference from Golden State from game one to game two. You could see that they were uh, they were you know talking some trash and getting up in uh, Boston's Boston's face. Draymond Green there. doesn't talk trash. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get to him in a minute. That's we're, that's we're, what I was we were, we're gonna, we're gonna yes. talk about Draymond Green <laughs> yeah. here 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 in just a and second. His, and his antics. So here's the uh, here's the third quarter. Mm -hmm. 
Got Clay Thompson going. There's Thompson. Yeah, he had a he had a decent night last night, and there there he is again. Ding. On the on the drive. Yeah, and Golden then, State really needs yeah. him to to have some great games here in order for them to. And who's that? Uh, Steph from way oh, out yeah. there, and then Steph that from one. way Oof. out yeah. there, and then at the at the end of the quarter, they got the lead up to like <laughs> like I don't know twenty something in the Took third quarter. Took care of business, unlike yeah, so. at the end of uh, we saw Look at that halftime. Oh, man. Ooh, that's, that, nice. that's when you know it's yeah. going your way when you, Jordan you start right chunking them in from half <laughs> half court and they go. So, so as unlike it turns game, out, fourth yes. quarter was just the fourth quarter, and the uh, Warriors <laughs> ended up tying the series with I don't know. Some people call this a blowout, 107 to 88. And you know what? It was looking a lot similar yep. to game one, but then Boston, of course, went on that unbelievable yep. run in game one. Obviously, Golden State does not let that happen. We are tied up at one game yep. apiece now hit it back to Boston. Steph 29, Jason Tatum 29, and of course the Warriors happy, Boston not so much. We knew our backs were against the wall. Uh, we couldn't go into Boston being down 2-0, so he lit the fire under us, and as this whole season, uh, he lit it and everybody else follows. That's the name of the game in the finals, you know. Um, it's uh, it's hard to get an open shot out there, and it's, it's supposed to be difficult. Uh, game one was was too easy for Boston um, with the looks they were getting in that fourth quarter. They did all the stuff that we talked about, um, stuff that we knew they were going to do going in, and um, we just got to be ready to go from from that second half on. You know, we're going to do what we do, focus on us, and um, we just didn't get it done tonight. We'll be better at home, game three. All right, so game three is coming up on, on Wednesday in Boston. But he, but here, I think last night the NBA revealed itself. Oh, but I okay. Think they, uh, I think go. they pulled back a layer. Because you remember early on in the game, Draymond Green got a yep. technical foul. Mm -hmm. Later in the game, he gets tangled. I think it was, he, it was either Jaylen Case Brown. Yeah, Brown. He gets Brown. tangled up with Brown. Mm -hmm. And so now the referees have to decide whether or not he should get a technical. Yeah. Steve Jaffe, a former NBA referee, comes on TV. Now he's the NBA referee consultant. He comes on and says, they're not going to give him a technical because he's already got one, mm -hmm. and they don't want to throw him out of the game, and they're going to take that into consideration. I'm going, what? Yeah. If the guy broke the rule, he broke the rule. Should it matter whether or not he had a technical or not? He should have been gone if that's the way you usually do it. But no. So now, so now you know <laughs> so that the NBA <laughs> changes the rules around for certain situations and certain players. That's what it's we found almost, out last. We always knew this, but they just admitted it last night. We changed the rules as to if, fit the situation. It's almost as if Draymond Green says to himself, "I might as well get the technical early on yeah. because then I can get away with a lot more yeah. after the fact." Because if you were looking at his antics throughout the game. Again, I have no dog in this fight either here, but uh, yeah, he was kind of, he was being a little much, especially with that play right there with Jalen Brown, basically kept his legs on Jalen Brown's body for, yeah. uh, as he was on the floor. So I think you're right. The refs don't want to decide these games they don't want to take out an important player like Draymond Green, but at the same time, I mean, a, a technical foul is a technical foul. Well, if the guy breaks the rules, because because the commentators, who who I'm not a big fan of the, either one of those two guys, <laughs> but they were talking, you know, one of them agreed with the referee and the other one didn't. And it's like, well, how can you agree with a guy breaking the rule? How can you agree with the guy, with the guy breaking the rule? Either there's rules oh, or there's no bad. rules. Either you drive 55 and the speed limit's 55. If you go over that, you're yeah. breaking the law, right? You set out these rules and then these guys break the rule. Well, we're, nah, we're not going to do that right now. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see the way that the refs officiate game three because I think now they're going to get a lot of talk here over the next few days <sighs> about Draymond Green, yep. his antics, and what yep. he's been doing because he was being a little a little much out there yesterday. Oh, he's been a lot much a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, it looked like, it's like a guy, football game guys instead guys of an NBA floor. game. Most of he should have been tossed, he was playing period. Football instead of basketball. He broke the rule. Things. Toss him. Hmm. You know. I wish I had popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm good. What a way to start that all Monday. Said, game three, yeah. in case at 12. Wednesday night, Wednesday. 8 o'clock. I'm just yeah. glad they gave us something to talk about. Yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 I, just, I, I don't understand. And then my next question is, what do these guys get to eat when they fly all the way across the country? <laughs> On their private jet? I imagine they're taking that's care sure of they're doing well. Whole other yeah. newscast, my friend. Huh? Whole other newscast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a long flight from San Francisco to Boston. It is. Yeah. So what, yeah. What's the food on the chart? Right? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Your next case that explains, David. <laughs> All right. RJ and Captain <laughs> Soapbox, thank stuff. you, gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> See you for game three. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Time check right now, 928, about 80 degrees. Speaking of case that explains, David Sears will not go far because he's going to talk about today's new episode of Case That Explains. That's coming up after the break. Plus, we're continuing our great graduate series this morning with the journey of a UTSA graduate who had several obstacles to overcome in order to get his degree.
And as we head to break, there's a quick check of the roads right there. And we're also going to have an update from Stephen Cavazos coming up after the break. Hey, good morning everyone. Time now is 932. We had a few issues out here off of I-10 East at Loop 410. Let's get a closer look at come bearing good news. We did have that crash that was reported a little bit earlier by TechSide and we saw that picked up on the TransGuide camera. Now we are just seeing smooth sailing through that spot, so that's some good news, but still a little bit of a slowdown that's being picked up right there off Loop 410 southbound near Ben's Engelman, where it was reported a little bit earlier this morning. Now the good news is that crash has cleared, but unfortunately those details still remain limited. We don't know if the driver faced any Injuries, but we are hoping they're okay. In the meantime, traffic does look like it's improving, but a quick detour if you want to avoid that yellow, you can actually take Loop 410 southbound where that area where it meets I-35. Uh, what you'll do after that is just get on a Seguin Road, take a right and a left on Ackman Road, and you'll hit I-10 if you want to avoid that yellow, but it looks like it should be in good shape in the next few minutes. Let's, while we're at it, we'll give you a view of the metro area at 933. That bird's eye view just showing lots of green, but we know there's still those active construction spots out there, so just remember anytime you see those crews move over, slow down, but better news out here of I-10 East at Loop 410, guys. Good. Thank you, Stephen. And gas prices keep on climbing, even right here in Texas. We are seeing prices that are breaking records. That's right. It's all followed, of course, the U.S. ban on Russian oil prompted by Russia's attack on Ukraine. Since then, many solutions have been discussed. And one that keeps bubbling up, drill more here at home. So this is a topic of tonight's Case That Explains episode. And for a preview, we bring back our David Sears, who worked on the story. Good morning again. Good morning. Very, very interesting. We, we basically touched on two topics, and obviously oil prices. Why have oil prices gone up the way they have? We're talking just a few cents at a time, or maybe even 10, 12, 30 cents at a time. Why are these prices skyrocketing? We touched on that for a little bit. And we also revisit a place that was in the middle of the oil boom 10 years ago. Remember back in 2012? 2010, 2012, the oil mm -hmm. boom started. We go back down to Tilden, which is right there in McMullen County, which is one of the hot counties when, when that oil boom was going on, and just kind of see where they are right now, how things have changed, and uh, what, what the situation is in, in a county like that. As far as the oil prices go, we, we, we uh, talk a little bit about that. You know, a lot of people, I mean, we just mentioned that, that uh, President Biden ended all the imports of Russian oil. How much does that really affect the price here in the United States? How much oil really comes in? How much were we really importing? We touched on that and we touched on some of the other reasons that oil prices are so high. A lot of people want to point fingers at oil companies. Of course. Right. That, yeah, understand that, but that's not necessarily the main reason why oil prices are where they are, gas prices are. Who did you guys talk to for this episode, David? Well, we actually, you know, a couple of months ago, back in April, they had a, uh, one of their consortium with all these oil companies get together here in San Antonio. We were able to talk to a couple of oil experts. We, uh, we sat down with, uh, with this lady right here from Washington, D.C. She knows a lot about, a lot about oil, another uh, econo economist who, who deals in oil. And then this is, of course, Judge Teal from down there in McMullen County. We went down and we visited with him. We also visited one of the store owners. This store has been around. That lady is now the third generation owner. Her husband's family owned this, this store there in Tilden, Joe's Market, right there in Tilden. You can see some of the, they, they have like a, on one aisle, you can go get uh, your, uh, your toilet plunger on another aisle, you can get a box of cereal. So that's, that's the kind of store that is. But this is, this is Tilden, this is small town USA. And he talks a little bit about uh, how, when that oil boom was going on, how many oil wells were actually cranking out oil God. and how many there are today. This significant difference is unbelievable. It's just like, wow, there's not, not really that much oil. And then you see uh, the, these folks from, uh, from the oil industry. So we got experts. We actually, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't talk to a lot of politicians. We didn't yeah. talk to people who wanted to just throw stuff out there. We actually sat down with some experts on, on why this is all happening. And you had to make some trips. So how long did it take to get all this episode together? Well, actually, so, so those folks were here back in April. Mm -hmm. And then we just made the trip to, to Children, uh, I think last week. It's all starting to run together. So, wow. um, so about a week or so ago, we, we made the trip to Tilton. So the thing about this particular story, it hadn't changed. Oil prices right. keep going up. So everything that they said back then and everything that, uh, that the folks there in Tilton said, it still holds true today because oil prices and, and gas prices just keep climbing. So uh, without giving it away, David, uh, uh, was that the big takeaway for you in researching this story now for several months? 
the that prices just keep going up. Yeah. Yeah. The, the big takeaway for me was was two things that McMullen County is still is still cranking it out a little bit and they learned how to save their money. They learned a lot of money management. And a lot of counties did. You had to because oil is so cynical. One day is high, one day is low. But the other thing that that really struck me was the fact that we want to always blame oil companies and we want to always blame Putin. But it's not necessarily those two things that are causing it. Oil is traded on the world market. Everybody, every every industrialized country in the world uses oil. Mm -hmm. So everybody is trying to get get a, get a handle on oil. And there's a lot of reasons that we don't have as much oil in this country as we used to have. And I think people are going to be really surprised when they find out how little Russian oil matters in the United States. See, but, there you go. There's there's an yep. interesting little wrinkle yep. right there. Yeah. Okay. Very, cool. very little. And we talk very all the little. time about this being a global economy, and I guess mm -hmm. never was that more true than it is right now. And we're finding that that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why prices are, go, are going up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, European countries cut off Russian oil because of the war in yep. Ukraine. So that has an effect on it, too. But the, a lot of people, a lot of the experts say we have our oil right under our feet. It's right here. And all we need to do is start drilling more. Yes. Then you'll hear some people say, well, we're drilling. We're, we're pumping out more oil than we ever have. Mm -hmm. Well, not according to the experts, we're not. And we have a, a ton of oil right here, and we could, be, we could be doing a lot more drilling on that. But then you get into all the government you know, restrictions and regulations and things like that. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. We're, we're anxious to hear so, more. Yeah. yeah, I was going to yeah. say we can hear from these experts at 6.30. 6.30 tonight. In case that explains. All right. Oil prices and how McMullen County is handling it all. All right. Our David Sears, Meyer Arthur, our producer Dylan Collins. Look for their right. finished product tonight right here on KSAT and anywhere you stream our products. And let's take a look outside with a live cam warming up a little bit more. 80 degrees. Of, yeah, we had a little bit of more cloud cover earlier, Justin, but now they're kind of like drifting away. Yeah, going uh, going away. The uh, sun is out in full force. Yeah, we're at 80 right now. It's, I give it to about lunchtime. We're going to be up close to 90. And, and by the afternoon, Triple digits, right? Uh, we have heat advisories in place. Anywhere you see there in orange is where we have heat advisories, but really anywhere here across South Texas, regardless if we have a heat advisory in place today and not tomorrow, all week you're going to want to take precaution because this heat, this heat wave is going to last through at least the weekend. And we're going to see temperatures over, over 100 each and every day and a little added humidity too. So just be extra careful out there. There's the forecast heat index today, 106. That's what it's going to feel like by say five o'clock today. And just about everyone is in the same boat. You get even some bigger numbers though as you get down towards Carrizo Springs, 111, the projected for forecast heat index today. So as we look at the big picture here, what changes? Not much, high pressure's in control. And what you'll notice here, the whole southwestern portion of the country is quiet and dry, and that's due to high pressure. All the active weather is up there in the Great Lakes and moving across parts of Arkansas and Missouri this morning. We're just not seeing the rain, and that's really unfortunate, too. 87 degrees by 11 o'clock, 91 noontime. We make it up to about 102, 4 o'clock, 103 by 5 p.m., and not much of a cool down this evening. We're still at 99 at 7 o'clock, 94, 8 o'clock, 90 by 9 p.m. We'll look ahead in that forecast and see if we can find any, any chance of rain in there. And we'll talk more about that seven day forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you very much. A double murder 17 years ago, not forgotten in San Antonio. Taco Land was once big in the San Antonio music scene, but all that changed in 2005 after a deadly robbery took the lives of the owner and one of the employees tonight at five and six right here on KSAT. We take a look back at the impact Taco Land had on many and then on the night beat for the very first time, the man convicted in this double murder speaks to KSAT from death row. Just thinking one day at a time, just going forward and hoping for the best and hopefully and praying that, you know, that these judges do the right thing and clear me from this wrongful conviction. Now, you don't want to miss this South Texas Crime Story three-part story airing later today at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. And then tomorrow morning, the podcast will be coming out. Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman will have more from those interviews. And also, Eric will be joining us tomorrow morning right here on GMS 89. Talk more about this latest, this latest South Texas crime story. And time now, 941 and 81 degrees for now.
Glad you're with us. Coming up next, life will throw you obstacles, but you shouldn't let that stop you from achieving your dreams. That's what one man is proving as he earns a degree from University of Texas, San Antonio. That story next in our great grad series after the break. A San Antonio man who had several obstacles thrown his way is proving that with hard work and dedication, anything is truly possible. In today's great graduate series, we hear from a UTSA graduate on how he was able to overcome all of these challenges. Tiffany Hueta shares his journey to getting to walk the stage. Universities, especially UTSA, is set up to offer so many different programs and resources to students to make sure that they're successful. David Macias reflects on his time at the University of Texas at San Antonio. The 31-year-old graduated with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering this month. My mom always likes to say that when I was growing up, I was always interested in, uh, in like building things and creating. But it wasn't an easy path getting here. It was just a really difficult time for my family. Growing up, Macias' family experienced homelessness. It was just kind of an unfortunate set of circumstances because m my dad was having such a difficult time finding work. Macias says this made him stronger and worked hard to succeed. In November 2010, he joined the Navy and worked in the Naval Construction Force. He had multiple deployments to Africa and Asia, where he witnessed orphaned children stop at nothing to gain their education. This motivated him to return to school in 2018, and he received his associate's degree. Thanks to SACA, I love SAC, San Antonio College, great school. I absolutely loved it there, and it really helped get me to this point. He wanted to continue his education and joined UTSA in 2020. Macias hopes his story inspires others and says to take advantage while you are in school. Get involved in the university. He says find something that you are passionate about and you will succeed. Macias says his motivation was his wife and children. Now that he has graduated, Macias hopes to join the Navy's underwater construction team. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And congrats to David again. Absolutely. All right, let's get some more perspective from Justin Horn uh, about what's happening Ooh. out there with our, our weather. And you, you look like uh, you're, it pains you. <laughs> well, it's, you know, uh, it's a tough topic these days because these temperatures are just, you know, going well up into the 100s. Today's probably going to be one of our hottest days around 103. But we look back at the stats, and this is, these are just what the stats tell us. As we look back to 1970 and go all the way up to today, we're seeing more summer days above normal, above average when it comes to that temperature. And that's been a steady rise. We've added 37 days of above average temperatures in the summer since 1970. Just to give you some perspective. So we know that we're seeing more and more days with this extreme heat. And as uh, we look at the consecutive 100 degree days, well, back in 1962, we had 21 consecutive 100 degree days. More recently, in 2013, 15 consecutive 100 degree days. 2019, there was 12. 2011, there was 12. And we remember 2011 was a huge drought year. Right now, this is projected, starting yesterday, we hit 100. But we think we may get about 10 days in a row here. So we're going to see us near some of those uh, record consecutive days, that are, at least that are in the record books for San Antonio International. Just something to watch. Basically, every day, well, every day in our seven-day forecast is 100 or above. Right now, we've got partly cloudy skies, 79 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 69. That'll be an important number today because we know it's going to be hot, but if we have to add the humidity in there too, it's going to make it all that much worse. Dew points come down a little bit this afternoon, but probably not enough. Southerly winds at 14 miles per hour. It already feels like 82 degrees outside. It is 82 in New Braunfels, 78 in Kerrville, 80 in Uvalde, and most of us here around Bear County, close to 80 degrees at this hour with temperatures quickly rising. Uh, heat advisories are in place for most of the area. And as I said earlier, don't pay too close attention to the boundaries. I mean, all of South Texas, most of Texas is going to be dealing with some pretty dangerous heat. And regardless of if, if we have a heat advisory in place today and not tomorrow or whatever, it's going to be hot all week long. And you'll need to take precaution all week long if you're going to be outside for any great amount of time. 91 degrees noontime, 94 by 1 p.m., 100 3 o'clock, 102 by 4 o'clock, 103 your high temperature today. And temperatures still are going to be in the mid-90s at 8 o'clock with clear skies. And the dew point, as I talked about, it does try to drop some into the mid-60s, 
but that would still generate a heat index. And by 5 p.m., we're thinking the heat index could be close to 106 here in San Antonio. A lot of places are going to be up above uh, that 105 threshold. So again, just be careful. The numbers get even larger as uh, as you go down to the south and west. I feel like this map matches my tie, and that's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. I just noticed that. Okay, uh, as we uh, go and look at the setup here, here is why we're seeing all this heat. And high pressure is really in control. It's that heat high that we've come to love or hate, however you want to look at it, during the summer. But it typically likes to sit over us. And when it does and it sticks there, it's just not a good thing. A lot of heat, and that pretty much takes rain out of the picture. Now, the one glimmer of hope I see is Saturday. High pressure will try to move far enough west where that may open the door a little bit for a weak frontal battery to come down with that flow and maybe generate a shower or storm. But I got to tell you, that's a long shot. As we get a little bit closer, we'll, we'll be able to maybe get a little better idea, but I just don't think it's, it's a great chance. And when we're talking about rain at the airport, we are now nearly nine inches below average. We've only seen about four and a half inches of rain this year. Del Rio is at 2.7. Austin was doing so well. They had 13 inches of rain, but now they've fallen below average. So it just goes to show you we are in a pretty dire situation here across Texas. And there is that seven day forecast, which includes a ton of numbers. 102 Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, 101 Thursday, 102 Friday, 103 Saturday and Sunday. Basically some record setting heat at least next couple of days. We'll keep you posted and we'll be right back. Five chip. Five tail movies that open huge usually see their ticket sales fall by about 50% their second weekend out, usually. A certain high flying sequel is defying the odds and setting records. CNN's David Daniel has a look at the weekend box office top five. I thought maybe this one. It makes you look like King Zog of Albania. Downton Abbey, a new era, picked up $3 million, falling to fifth place. The bad guys are still zooming along. $3.3 .3 million put the animated adventure in fourth place. The Bob's Burgers movie stayed in third, taking in $4.5 million. Things just got out of hand. $9.3 million kept Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness in second place. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. With no new challengers, Top Gun Maverick fell just 32% in its sophomore weekend, grossing $86 million for a 10-day domestic total of $292 million, already Tom Cruise's highest grossing film ever at the domestic box office. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Yeah, who says people don't go to the movies anymore? Uh, 103 Monday, 102 Tuesday, we've got 100s all week long. Heat advisories in effect today. Be extra careful out there. The heat index could go as high as 105. And you caught Ouch. Top Gun this weekend? Last night. You liked, you it? liked it? So good. I good. can't wait. Yeah. All right, I'm out. <laughs> Have a great day, guys.